Okay, the last couple of videos were more theoretical. Uh, this video is going to be much more practical. What do we do to analyze and extract information out of an IR spectrum? So we're going to be focused on the diagnostic region. And there are actually a limited number of functional groups and signals that we're specifically going to look for in an IR spectrum. We're going to look for double bonds between carbon-carbon and carbon-oxygen. We're going to look for carbon-carbon and carbon-nitrogen triple bonds. We're going to look at CH stretches. And we're going to look for alcohols, amines, and carboxylic acids. And that's it. These are the bonds and functional groups that we're going to be looking for. All right, this is what I basically call my cheat sheet for analyzing IR spectra. And it seems like a lot of information at first, uh, but I think once you sort of go through it and uh, look at a couple spectra, it's hopefully not going to seem so bad. And I'll have this posted on D2L. So the first thing I do when I analyze an IR spectra is I draw lines at 1500 wave numbers and 3000 wave numbers. And so the purpose of the line at 1500 wave numbers is to separate my spectra into the fingerprint region, which is below 1500 wave numbers, and I'm going to ignore and the diagnostic region where I'm going to focus my attention, and that's everything above 1500 wave numbers. All right, so then the double bond region is between 1600 and 1800 wave numbers. This is where we're going to see carbon-carbon uh, and carbon-oxygen double bonds. The carbon-oxygen double bonds have higher intensities, um, and they'll generally be at higher frequencies and also be broader. We'll look for triple bonds between 2100 and 2300 wave numbers. And the triple bonds that we'll see are carbon-carbon and carbon-nitrogen. And they look pretty similar. So oftentimes we need other information, like the formula of the molecule, to have a prediction about which one it is we're seeing. All right, and then our line at 3000 wave numbers. So in the last video, I talked about how we were going to come back to talking about the C8 stretches. And that's what the line at 3000 wave numbers tells me. Peaks just below 3,000 wave numbers are uh, carbons that are sp3 hybridized, so all single bonds. Peaks just above 3,000 wave numbers, these are our alkenes, so these are carbon-hydrogen stretches that are connected to a carbon that's part of a carbon-carbon double bond. And then if I have a hydrogen connected to an sp hybridized carbon, right, so that's something with a carbon-carbon triple bond, uh, that's going to be a little bit higher still at 3,300 wave numbers. All right, and then the only other three things we look for are alcohols, carboxylic acids, and amines. And we've already seen some examples of these, and we'll see some more in the next uh, couple slides and in the next video. All right, now, all the orgo faculty have agreed to sort of give you this table when we uh, have assessments on IR spectroscopy. I, so And so I will give it to you. You don't want to use it. Uh, if you have practiced IR spectroscopy, you won't need this. Uh, and if you have to use it, um, essentially you've already lost. You haven't spent enough time preparing for uh, the IR spectroscopy. So you'll get it, but you shouldn't use it. All right. So when we look at the IR spectrum, I typically draw a line at 1500 wave numbers. And so everything below that, that's the fingerprint region. We're going to ignore it. And so we're just going to focus on the diagnostic region, which is everything above 1500 wave numbers. And so our double bond region is between about 1600 and 1800 wave numbers. The triple bond region is between about 2100 and 2500 wave numbers. And then the CH stretches are all right around 3000 wave numbers. And so these are the regions that we're looking in specifically in addition to the alcohols, carboxylic acids, and amines. Okay, so let's look at double bonds. And so double bonds typically appear between 1600 and 1800 wave numbers. This molecule has two double bonds, and so we'd expect to see two peaks in that region. And we do. And so this is pretty typical of a carbon-carbon double bond. This is pretty typical of a carbon-oxygen double bond. And you can see the carbon-carbon double bond is thinner, less broad than the carbon-oxygen double bond. 
You can also see that it's lower intensity and it's at slightly lower frequency. And that's pretty typical of carbon oxygen and carbon carbon double bonds. All right, the triple bond region, that's between about 2100 and 2500 wave numbers. And so this is pretty typical of a carbon carbon triple bond. Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, carbon nitrogen triple bonds also look very similar. Uh, but when we're analyzing IR spectrum, oftentimes we'll know the formula. And so if there are no nitrogens in the formula, then we can't possibly have carbon nitrogen triple bonds. So we know it must be a carbon carbon triple bond. Uh, if I happen to have a nitrogen in my molecule and I see a triple bond, I don't know for sure that it's a carbon nitrogen triple bond. Um, but particularly if I don't see any evidence of amines, that's a pretty good indication uh, that I'm looking at a carbon nitrogen triple bond. The other thing about uh, carbon carbon triple bonds, if one of the car carbons is connected to a hydrogen, then we'd also expect to see that CH stretch at about 3,300 wave numbers. So that also helps to tell me, right, if I see a triple bond, and then I also see a peak at 3,300 wave numbers, then that's probably telling me that it is a carbon-carbon triple bond, not a carbon-nitrogen triple bond. All right, so the line at 3,000 wave numbers, that's to help us identify our CH stretches. So if our carbon is sp3 hybridized, so it has all single bonds, those CH stretches will be below 3,000 wave numbers. And most molecules, organic molecules, have sp3 hybridized carbons with hydrogens. And so we'll almost always see uh, these signals or these peaks just below 3,000 wave numbers. If we have an alkene, so if we have a carbon-carbon double bond, if there are hydrogens connected to one of those sp2 hybridized carbons, we would expect, expect to see peaks at 3,100 wave numbers. And if we have an alkyne, if it's connected, if it has a hydrogen connected to it, then like in the last slide, we would expect to see a peak at 3,300 wave numbers. But it's important to remember, just because I have an alkene doesn't, or an alkyne, doesn't mean I'll have these CH stretches because it's got to have hydrogens. For example, if I had this molecule, Right, we have sp hybridized carbons, but there are no hydrogens attached to either of these sp hybridized carbons. So if there are no hydrogens attached to those carbons, we can't have a CH stretch because no hydrogens. We've seen this a couple times, uh, but the last uh, couple slides that I have here are looking at alcohols, carboxylic acids, and amines. The other things that we look for besides double bonds, triple bonds, CH stretches. We look for alcohols, carboxylic acids, and amines. Alcohols are all typically around 3,400 wave numbers. They're fairly intense peaks and they're fairly broad. Uh, sometimes people describe these as swords or looking like swords. All right, carboxylic acids. We've seen an example of this before, a carboxylic acid has both a carbon oxygen double bond. And so we'd expect to see the carbon oxygen double bond around 1700 wave numbers. And then the OH stretch from the carboxylic acid, that's what gives us the hairy beard that we talked about in the last slide. So when you see a really broad peak centered around 3000 wave numbers that looks kind of like a Gandalf beard, that's the OH from a carboxylic acid. Okay, the last functional group uh, besides alcohols and carboxylic acids that we'll be looking for are amines. And we talked about these last time. If I have a primary amine, I have a double peak around 3,400 wave numbers. If I have a secondary amine, I have a single peak also around 3,400 wave numbers. Uh, now, these can be close to um, SP hybridized carbon CH stretches and also alcohols. But it's also about the shape, not just the wave numbers. Uh, the amine signals tend to be a little bit broader than the sp hybridized CH stretches, um, but the OHs, the alcohols, are broader still, and they're generally much more intense. If you remember the alcohols that we've seen, right? They go, go down much further. They're much more intense, and so that's how I can distinguish between a secondary amine and an alcohol. All right, here's just another slide. Uh, and so would you say uh, this has 
um, a secondary mean or a primary mean? Well, the double peak, that tells me that I probably have right, a primary mean. The nitrogen's connected to one carbon, that's why we call it primary, and since it's only connected to one hydrogen, it must be connected to the two hydrogens, and so the double peak are, is due to the symmetric and the asymmetric stretches. All right, here's an example of another secondary amine. All right, it's at about the same frequency as an alcohol, but the alcohol is going to be much broader looking like a sword, uh, whereas the secondary amine, right, nitrogen is connected to two carbons, it's got the one hydrogen, and you don't always see this, but this sort of like deformed peak where it starts fat and then it just gets sort of narrow at the tip, I feel like you often see that with these secondary amines. And so further uh, differentiating the shape of the secondary amine from the alcohol. All right, and so in my last video, uh, we're gonna look at some specific examples of IR spectra and practice uh, sort of analyzing those and matching them up with molecular structures.